It's definitely been a little while since my last video. I think I've taken this time to have a bit of a creative recharge to come up with some new concepts and also ideas as well. And also I've been putting together the film lab space which I announced in the last video. So that's taken up some of my time as well. But yeah, considering all those things are kind of taking shape and I'm feeling re-energized and re-inspired, you should expect some more videos coming up soon. So cool. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's jump into my photography favorites. So the first photography item I want to talk about is the glorious Yashica Mat 124G, this beautiful camera that I picked up recently. And yeah, I wanted something different um, in the medium format world that was a bit less cumbersome and heavy compared with my Mamiya RZ67. And also I really wanted to test out the six by six square format um, and see if that can push my creativity in a different direction and try out that different format and see how I go with that as well. I'm not gonna lie, I've been pretty impressed with this camera so far. The results I've been getting have been super impressive. And yeah, I've just been enjoying shooting this camera as well. So this is actually called a twin lens reflex camera. So what that means is you've got two lenses here, one's for taking the photo and the other one is for composing, which you'll see through the viewfinder. And it's actually the bottom lenses for taking the actual shot. So what that means is you're probably gonna get a little bit more of the foreground or the below part of the image than you would expect just looking through the viewfinder. And you've got to bear that in mind when you're composing and kind of like a rangefinder in a certain way where what the image you're seeing isn't exactly uh, what you're composing. So you're rocking with a Yashin on 80mm f3.5 lens. And one thing I will say when it is stopped down, um, I guess to lower apertures like f3.5 to maybe 5.6, there, there is a certain softness to the image which I'm finding. I don't know if that's this just particular camera or just these cameras in general. Um, but yeah, I've noticed a certain soft softness at those lower apertures, which might be a bit of an issue for me because I do like shooting in low light situations like blue hour and golden hour. Um, so I have to keep an eye on that and see how we go as well. Having that six by six format is super interesting. I do find myself drawn to shooting very symmetrical kind of Wes Anderson like images. Um, but yeah, and also kind of using a bit more of the foreground to add in a bit more of, you know, texture and more depth to the image as well. I like the way it's kind of thrown me off uh, the way I shoot a bit and allowed me to get a bit uncomfortable with that format and try something new. But yeah, it's early days using the camera. Uh, I'll definitely do a more comprehensive review once I've run a few more rolls through it and uh, yeah, used it a lot more, but yeah, so far so good. So the second item I wanna talk about is this strap by Tone Customs. If you've been around this channel for a little while, you know I'm a big fan of Tone Customs. He's a one-man band that makes these customizable camera straps made out of colorful climbing rope. Also, I'd say he's a pretty multi-talented dude that has a very unique approach to creativity and craftsmanship. And you can tell he appreciates every order that he gets in. There's this very kind of unique personalized buying experience you get along with buying the strap as well. Um, yeah, and I've bought two camera straps from him previously and I thought, you know, it's about time I get one dedicated to my Nikon F, which is in the back there. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I can strap it to my Yushika mat as well um, over the shoulder like so and then I can bring it forward. This particular camera strap is called the V2 camera rope and I went for a bit more of a natural color palette this time around. So you've got the cream and white and you know touches of orange there. You've got also the green rope around here and some more beige up here as well. At the bottom of the strap here as well you've got these S binders or locking carabiners whatever you want to call them. And they, yeah, give you that peace of mind that your camera's attached very securely. Um, and yeah, it's a great thing to know, especially if you've got expensive equipment. But yeah, I've had kind of two previously for about coming up to two years now and I've had no issues with them. So I think that's just a testament to the great craftsmanship and yeah, just knowing that your camera's gonna be secure as well. It's a good thing to think about as well. So the next pickup I wanna talk about is the Isoconic L308X light meter. It's something I've wanted to buy for a little while now and finally pulled the trigger on. Previously, I'd been using a phone app to test the light and yeah, just wanted something that was gonna be a bit more accurate and some more unique lighting conditions. And I just love the fact that you can know you can have it around your neck like so and be able to pull out very easily. Uh, it's super compact and light as well. So yeah, it's just a pleasure 
to use uh, rather than you know always getting your phone out unlocking it you know getting to the right app doing all that kind of stuff which does take a bit more time also as well within my film photography work I'm integrating it more into my professional work so I'm getting some you know paid film photography work as you want to uh, as you might call it so yeah it feels like it's a bit more professional to have one of these to pull one of these out instead of you know using a phone app as well so that's another good thing one thing I will note it's not packed full of any crazy features it's pretty simple in that regard has a few different light settings uh, for studio light for natural light um, that kind of thing but yeah I don't really shoot much studio work and yes I just wanted something you know light and compact like I said so wasn't too bothered about it having too many features I know that the other light meters are a bit more technical and have a bit more features going on there but yeah this was probably more suited for my needs talking about the iPhone one of the things I wanted to talk about next is I've been really enjoying using it for documenting passing moments I made a video kind of dedicated to you know talking about iPhone photography and my love for having something that's readily available like that and uh, yeah just enjoying the user experience of using the iPhone to shoot digital photos. One of the biggest inspirations behind doing that has been artist Sean Brown. So he's a director, photographer, um, designer that's based out of I think it's Canada I've double checked that but I might be wrong but yeah he's a multi-talented dude and he frequently collaborates with one of my favorite artists as well Daniel Caesar who's a musician so that brings me to my next photography favorite which is this book he actually brought out called in no particular order and which is all of his iPhone photos he's taken over um, not all of them but a bunch of them he's taken recently and it spans across you know uh, design, travel, research, architecture, a bunch of different topics that I find really interesting myself and something I'm drawn to as well when I'm shooting with my iPhone. It's a pretty incredible photo book which showcases his unique eye for capturing scenes just from his phone. Often you're seeing these minimalist, clean or sometimes symmetrical photos influenced from an eye of a designer which produces these very aesthetically pleasing photos. Sean Brown definitely shares an interest in the analogue world which is ever present in his work, something I'm very drawn to as well if you haven't noticed. He is drawn to timeless design technology from mostly the 90s and 2000s era and you can see its influences in the products he designs too. The format of the book is super simple as well, it's just got a photo on each page which keeps your concentration towards the photos and not anything else which I really like as well. Even though the book is called in no particular order, it definitely feels like there's a specific order to the book in terms of a color palette. You're starting with these very muted tone images um, and then you're moving towards more of a warmer toned image more in the realm of orange, yellow, um, red as well in terms of that. And then you're moving to more cooler kind of bluey um, tone images from there. And then it finishes off into these earthy colors with greens and browns and yellows as well. Also for someone like me who has aspirations later down the track of being a creative director, this is a great way of seeing, you know, kind of behind the scenes and more of his thought processes and, you know, images that he's drawn to and his inspirations uh, for certain projects as well, which is always great to see. And yeah, just a glimpse into his life, I guess, as well, which is, yeah, super interesting. I realize this book is probably not everybody's cup of tea and I probably wouldn't compare it to a carefully curated and photographed photo book of another kind. But yeah, for what it stands for, I really enjoy it and I think it's a great source of inspiration for me. I guess that brings me to the end of my photography pickups for today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was super fun to make and get into the swing of shooting again. But yeah, if you're new to this channel and it wasn't obvious by my photography pickups, I do mainly shoot film uh, and I post a lot of my film photography on my Instagram. So if you want to check out that, make sure to go over there and have a little squiz. Um, squiz? Yeah. Anyway, otherwise, thanks so much for watching again. I do always appreciate it and I'll see you next time. Peace.